Number 10. Strange Lights Since the 1940s and possibly even earlier, there has been a strange light phenomenon observed in the Hesdalen Valley, Norway. The spectacle has a form of white or yellow light of unknown origin standing or floating above ground level. Between 1981 and 1984, the lights were observed up to 20 times per week, but have drastically reduced in frequency since then, about 10 to 20 times per year. Now, why the decrease? all of a sudden, no one knows, and no one knows where the lights come from, but UFO enthusiasts took this as a sign that the valley was a portal to other worlds. Now, it wasn't just conspiracy theorists that were interested in this as the strange bursts of light in the 1980s attracted physicists too, and quest piqued by the idea of some unexplained natural phenomenon. In the decades since, scientists have determined the glow likely comes from air turned into plasma, but despite ongoing research and numerous working hypotheses, there is no convincing explanation of the origin of these lights, and it seems like it will always be a mystery. Number 9. Falling Through the Ceiling Back in the 1950s, the Cooper family from Texas moved into their new house. Once there, they took a family photo to commodorate the new move in. Everything was normal, but then when the picture was developed, the image of a body falling from the ceiling was clearly visible. Now, to be clear, no one fell from the ceiling when they took the photo, so what happened? As further investigation on this story has brought no plausible explanation, there exists many speculations, including one that argues that the shadow is the ghost of a previous owner of the house. House. But my question is, why is he falling from the ceiling? It just doesn't make sense and it's absolutely terrifying, and I can't even imagine the reactions when they got the photo back. Number 8. The Young Boy One of the most famous haunted houses in the United States is the Dutch Colonial House at 112 Ocean Avenue in Amityville, New York. The haunting stems from the night of November 13, 1974, when 23 year old Ronald DeFeo ended the lives of all six members of his family. He was then arrested, convicted, and given six concurrent life sentences. In December 1975, George and Kathy Lutz, along with their three children, moved into the house and claimed that spooky things were happening. For example, George would wake up at 3.15 every morning, which was the approximate time that Ronald committed his crimes. Kathy said she would feel a ghostly presence and be embraced by it. All of this and more caused the family to flee in fear after only staying at the house for 28 days, and honestly, I don't blame them. Due to this, demonologist Ed and Lorraine Warren visited visited the house and set up time-lapse infrared cameras and caught this photo. Now, This picture wasn't made public until three years later when George Lutz appeared on the Merv Griffith show in 1979. Believers of the haunting believe that the photo is a picture of the youngest DeFeo son, John Matthew, who was nine at the time of the deaths. Others believe it's a staged photo, but despite the controversy, this picture is one of the most frightening images from the Amityville horror. Number 7. The Madonna with the Saint Giovannio This is one of the most famous unexplained images images of all time. The painting, The Madonna with the Saint Giovanni, was created in the 15th century. While the focus of the picture is on Mary, something creepy hovers above her left shoulder. There's an object that appears to be some sort of UFO hovering above the cliffs, and just below it you can see a man and his dog looking up at the saucer. Now, why on earth would this be included in the painting? Is it proof that UFOs and aliens have been around for a long time, and humans knew we weren't alone in the universe? I'm not sure what the explanation is but to be honest, it scares me. Number 6. Ghost Outside This ghostly figure was captured on a security camera at the Hampton Court, a royal palace located near the Greater London area. In the 16th century, the palace was expanded and renovated to be fit for a king, complete with lush gardens, banquet halls, and Henry VIII's state and private apartments. This palace has over 1,390 rooms, but it seems like they had an unwanted visitor. A figure appeared to be closing one of the palace's doors, but when guards arrived to the palace, nobody was there. Now, as the palace has a long and violent history, the figure is believed to be one of the several ghosts that are rumored to haunt the building. Number 5. The Sea Creature Hook Island is off the coast of Queensland, Australia, and Robert Lissarek, his family, and a friend, Hank De Jong, stayed there for three months in late 1964. On December 12, 1964, the Lissareks and Hank were crossing Stonehaven Bay on the island when Robert's wife noticed something odd in the water. It was a long, tadpole-like creature. It was black and was believed 
believed that it was at least 30 feet long. Robert and Hank decided to venture into the water and record it on film. When they entered the water, the monster was even bigger than they thought, but as they started recording, the creature opened its mouth and swam away. Then when they checked the film, they had no footage of the creature, but the picture clearly shows it. The pictures were published in a magazine and eventually spread across the world, making it one of the most famous and unexplained pictures of a cryptid. Now there are a number of possible explanations as to what this creature really is. One is that it was just a plastic bag that had been used by the American Navy for experiments in towing fuel. It could be a deflated skyhook balloon covered in weeds, or it could be a roll of cloth that was tied together and placed in the bottom of the lagoon. Regardless of what it is, I wouldn't want to go near it. Number four, the moon. In 1972, this image was taken by Apollo 17 during its flight to the moon near the area known as Geophone Rock. NASA listed this image as blank, but after retouching the photo, you can see that it's not completely blank. Turning up the contrast, a pyramidal structure can be seen. So what is it? Was it some malfunction of the camera, or is there actually a pyramid on the moon? NASA has never given a credible version of the issue, which has led to some speculations about what else can actually be on the moon hidden to public awareness. And listen, not to be a crazy conspiracy theorist, but maybe it's true that aliens built the pyramids on Earth, as it looks like they did it on the moon too. And there was at one time NASA lost connection with an astronaut who was freaking out saying they're watching us from the moon, and what if the they they're talking about lives in those pyramids? Huh? Just something to think about. Number 3. South Forks Bridge This image was first made available to the public in 2004, when it was featured in the Barrelorn Pioneer Museum's exhibit, Their Past Lives Here. The photograph was taken in 1941 at the reopening of the South Fork Bridge in Canada. When the museum digitized and placed the collection online that included this picture in 2010, the internet went crazy. In the image, there is a man who clearly stands out, and many think he is a time traveler. The idea of him being a time traveler hinges on three items he is seen wearing or holding that appear to be of too modern a vintage for the 1940s, a logo shirt, a small portable camera, and wraparound sunglasses. It just seems like he's completely out of place, but who knows? Number 2. Ghost in the Water In 2014, Kim Davidson was swimming in a lake with a friend and their combined three children. They went to Murphy's Hole and Lockyer River in Queensland, Australia. While there, they took a photograph. But when the photograph came out, there was a ghostly figure of a girl behind the group who looked like she was leering behind the family. They said there was nothing in between them when the photo was taken, and on closely examining the image, they realized it was a white face with dark eyes and two horns on either side of the head. Its fingers are on Kim's shoulder and on the small girl's right arm. Kim posted it on Facebook, and upon seeing the image, many comments were made, and some said that the two horns looked like two ponytails or buns. A fellow user shared the story of Doreen O'Sullivan, a girl who accidentally drowned in the same creek in the same spot in 1913. Her obituary was found in the Brisbane Courier, dated the 22nd of November, 1913. Now, the spot, which has always been considered dangerous, is known as Murphy's Hole and is over 20 feet deep. Deep. Upon reading this, Kim recollected that they had experienced strange things that day when they were swimming in the water. She felt someone's presence behind her, but she ignored it, and twice someone in the water even grabbed her elder daughter's leg. Now, by looking at this photo, she was convinced that the unknown face was that of Doreen. Kim got two paranormal experts to check the picture, and after investigating the photograph carefully, they concluded that the shape of the image was that of a child. And coming in at number one, the babushka lady. The woman in the brown coat, or the babushka lady, as she was later called by the FBI, was very close to JFK when he was a in Dallas. Traveling in a presidential motorcade through downtown Dallas, JFK was a hit once in the back and once in the head. Kennedy was taken to Parkland Hospital for emergency medical treatment, where he was pronounced dead 30 minutes later. Now, Lee Harvey Oswald was charged with Kennedy's assassination, which he denied. Oswald was as well soon after. Now, the spawned numerous conspiracy theories. These theories allege the involvement of the CIA, the Mafia, Vice President Lyndon B. Johnson, Cuban Prime Minister Federal Castro, the KGB, or some combination of these individuals and entities. The original FBI investigation and Warren Commission report, as well as the alleged benign CIA cover-up. But according to eyewitnesses, this woman, the babushka lady, filmed the entire thing. It's thought that from her vantage point, she may have been able to answer some critical questions about 
about what really happened that day. However, the FBI was never able to track her down, and no one has since been able to figure out the identity of this mystery observer. And we are starting off this list with the ghost of Worsted Church. So back in August of 1975, there's this guy named Peter Bertolt, just your average Joe, right? He's out with his family, taking a stroll around the church of St. Mary's in North Folk. Uh, nothing unusual, just a family day out. Peter's got his camera, it snaps a picture of his wife Diane sitting on a church bench, deep in uh, prayer mode. Seems pretty ordinary. Peter, being the typical family man, claims there was absolutely nobody behind his wife when he took that picture. Fast forward a few months, they're hanging out with some friends, showing off their holiday slides, and boom, one of their friends points at a photo and asks, Hey Diane, who's that sitting behind you? Cue the collective confusion. Peter and Diane squint at the photo, and lo and behold, there's this white figure lurking behind Diane, almost like a woman in an old fashioned bonnet. Now, they're not exactly the type to jump to ghostly conclusions, but when they saw that eerie figure on the projector screen, they were a little bit disturbed. They decide to investigate, take the photo back to the church. The local vicar, always up for a good ghost story, tells them about the legend of the White Lady. Apparently, she's this ghostly woman who pops up when people need healing. And at the time that photo was taken, Diane was dealing with some health problems and was on antibiotics. Coincidence? Maybe. Spooky? Definitely. At our number nine spot, we have the Madonna of Bachelor's Grove. So it's 1991, Judy Fells, a former member of the Ghost Research Society, decided to check out the infamous Bachelor's Grove Cemetery in Illinois. Armed with a camera, she started snapping pictures, thinking she was alone in the graveyard. Little did she know, she wasn't. When the photos developed, Judy spotted something bizarre. There on one of the gravestones was a woman shown in this picture here. She appeared relaxed, slightly leaning forward as if gently rocking. Judy hadn't seen anyone while she was taking the pictures. Reports of this woman in white date back to the 70s. She's not your typical ghost either. Sometimes she's seen alone, just chilling on a tombstone. Other times she's holding something, something that many over the years have believed to be a baby. And it's not just in that one spot that her ghost is spotted. Uh, people claim to have seen her all around the graveyard. Next on the list is the photograph of the Wem ghost. So our story begins in the small town of Wem in England. In 1995, a terrible fire ravaged a building in town, destroying it completely. What caught everyone's attention though was a photo taken by local resident Tony O'Reilly during the fire. A picture captured a young girl standing amidst the flames seemingly unharmed. The witnesses claimed there was no girl at the scene. No living girl, that is. Some said the ghostly figure looked a lot like a girl who died in a fire at the same spot in 1677. Her name was Jane Churn. According to legend, her ghost occasionally appeared in the town. Experts examined the photograph, attempting to debunk it, but there was no conclusive evidence. Tony O'Reilly, uh, the man behind the lens, was said to be a straightforward and honest uh, guy. He insisted that he hadn't noticed the ghostly figure when he took the photo and that he hadn't doctored it whatsoever. Number seven, the Brown Lady of Rhinum Hall. Back in 1936, Captain Hubert C. Provind snapped a pic in Rhinum Hall, Norfolk. It would go on to be one of the most well-known ghost photographs of all time. He happened to capture the ghostly figure of an entity known Known as the Brown Lady. According to the story, she's a Lady Dorothy Walpole, a woman who got the short end of the stick back in the 18th century. She had an affair, hubby found out, decided to lock her away in a dark corner of the mansion. She got hit with smallpox in 1726 and died a pretty miserable death. Visitors and staff at Rhinum Hall have claimed to bump into this ghostly lady over the years. Some hear her footsteps, like she's climbing the stairs. Others feel a sudden chill, even when it's warm. And then there are those who swear they've seen her, the full bone ghostly apparition, something like in this photograph here. Next 
We have the famous newbie church ghost photo. Back in 1963, a reverend named Kenneth F. Lord was snapping pictures inside the Church of Christ the Consoler, located at Newby Hall in North Yorkshire, UK. And as he snapped away, nothing seemed out of the ordinary at first, but fast forward to when he develops the film, and there's this bizarre photo showing up. In the picture, clear as day, there's this semi-translucent, almost monk-like figure just hanging out at the church altar. Again, Reverend Lord claimed he was all by himself in the church when he took the shot. No one else uh, was around, so who the heck was this phantom monk? Totally baffled, Reverend Lord decided to get some experts involved. They checked out the photo and swore up and down that it hadn't been messed with. As to who these experts were, uh, that info's not really known. Uh, there's a good chance these supposed experts were uh, of the self-proclaimed variety, uh, but in creepy picture regardless. And at our number five spot, we have the Sefton Church ghost photograph. All right, so in Maryside, England sits Sefton Church, just a hop and skip north of Liverpool. Now, back in 1999, the photographer named Brad Steiger was out there, camera in hand. There was another photographer uh, right next to him, both of them doing their thing. While they were clicking away, Steiger managed to capture something strange. In one of his shots, clear as day once again, there's a figure that looks like a priest. Not weird to see a priest in a church, but again, there were apparently only two people in the church at the time, neither of which were dressed as priests. No fancy setups, no eerie lighting here, just a random day, two guys with cameras, and a photo of a phantom priest. There's also a pub next door to the church called the Punch Bowl, which is supposedly haunted. Uh, maybe the ghostly father in this picture heads next door to have a couple sneaky drinks now again. Probably what I'd do if I were a ghost. I imagine it would get pretty boring after a while. In fact, I think that's what creeps me out the most about the idea of ghosts. Not seeing one, but actually becoming one. Like trapped in this eternal monotonous prison, spending your days repeating the last moments of your death, and then occasionally appearing ominously in people's amateur photographs. Like, yeah. Some to look forward to. Number four, St. Botoff's Church Ghost. In 1982, a photographer, Chris Brackley, snapped a photo of St. Botoff's Church, not suspecting anything unusual, but when the film was developed, a mysterious figure appeared by the balcony. This one is a bit harder to spot, but just uh, kind of take a close look in the top right-hand corner there. Brackley swore he hadn't seen anyone there when he took the shot. The photo underwent rigorous analysis, ruling out double exposure, or equipment glitches. Brackley's gear was uh, working fine, yet the unexplained figure uh, was there. A few years passed and Brackley was then contacted by a builder who had worked on a crypt restoration at the same church. And during the restoration, a wall was knocked down, revealing a disturbed coffin. And inside was a woman whose face that the builder said eerily resembled the figure captured in Brackley's photo. Next up, we have the Coventry Spectre. In 1985, there was this prayer meeting at St. Mary's Guildhall in Coventry, England. Members of the Coventry Freeman organization gathered for a prayer meeting. They were your typical group, all suited up and bowing their heads in prayer. Now, the odd part happened later when the photos from the meeting were developed. Among the familiar faces was an unfamiliar one, a figure distinctively dressed in a long robe. This wasn't your average attendee attire, everyone else was in modern suits and ties, but there was this mysterious robed figure in the top left-hand corner. No one in the group remembered anyone dressing like that during the meeting, and what really struck people was the height of this figure. They were noticeably tall, not the kind of person you'd easily overlook in a room. All right, and in second place, we have a demon in the hospital. The story goes that a nurse working her shift at some unnamed hospital snapped this pic. She'd taken a picture of the security camera, and in the shot, you get this patient chilling in bed, and, well, not really chilling. I'll get to that part later. Uh, but anyway, he's in bed, and right on top of them, there's something straight out of your worst nightmares. Uh, a demon. At least that's what it looks like. It's your classic devil type of vibe. Horns on its head, legs that resemble something uh, almost goat-like. The entity apparently popped up briefly, and what's even creepier is that just a few hours after it appeared, the patient in the bed passed away. Is this a genuine demon caught on camera? A uh, Grim Reaper's demonic cousin playing a visit, patiently awaiting to drag its next victim into the fiery depths? 
I don't know. Why don't you let us know in the comments? Finally, we have the Pine Hill Cemetery ghost. In Pine Hill Cemetery, a series of photographs captured by Tyler Carinasios uh, brought attention to the possibility of paranormal activity in this quiet burial ground. What initially seemed like routine snapshots uh, changed when he took a closer look at the pictures. As Carinasios enhanced the images, an eerie figure, almost like a woman wearing a veil, appeared in the background. He hadn't noticed anything when he was actually taking the pictures. It only showed up later. Pine Hill Cemetery in Hollis, New Hampshire has been rumored to be a hotspot for paranormal experiences. If you're thinking the figure is just a headstone, by the way, there was another photo taken during the day which shows that there is no headstone in that spot. Kicking off the list at number 10, William Thomas Dead. Born in 1849, William Thomas Dead was the son of Congregationalist minister, and at the age of 22, he was appointed as editor of the Northern Echo, a regional newspaper in Darlington. This British medium, Richard Borsonall, featured a photo of W.T. Stead and a spirit. Or a demon. One of the two, both pretty terrifying. While William was investigating a spiritual case, he took this photo with what's supposed to be the spirit of Pete Botha. Now, the reason many believe that maybe the spirit is evil is that Stead later on died in the Titanic. He boarded the ship to take part in a peace congress at Carnegie Hall, and survivors mentioned William Thomas Stead a few times. Apparently, at dinner, he was chatting his way throughout the entire 11 course meal, recounting exciting, spooky times in his life, even mentioning a cursed mummy that he encountered at the British Museum once. That's a little odd for table talk. He even gave his life jacket to another passenger that night too. Stead would often claim that he would one day pass due to hanging or to drowning. And right before he was to be awarded with the Nobel Peace Prize, he passed away due to the latter. Was he cursed? I believe so, to be honest with you. What do you guys think? Number nine, the demonic boy photograph. It doesn't matter where or when, but odds are you've probably seen this photo at some point. All those late nights when you're scrolling through Reddit, you've probably seen this at some point. I know I have, and every time I see it, I'm kind of like, mm, it looks pretty real. It's pretty haunting. You know when you see a photo, sometimes you get bad vibes, like it registers in your brain as something scary and real. Like you want to find something that looks fake about the photo, but it's tough. This photo was taken inside the Amityville house in 1976. It appears to be a young boy or ghost, spirit, demon, whatever, with glowing white eyes. It was taken with automatic cameras equipped with infrared. And it makes it even creepier that the boy looks like he's peeking around the corner. Like he knew something was coming almost, he didn't want to get caught. That's the creepiest part here. A photographer named Gene Campbell took it, and Gene was working with paranormal investigators Ed and Lorraine Warren at the time. Yeah, the famous duo now rocking the big screen Conjuring universe. This was a real thing. They were on this case in real life. This photo was revealed three years after it was taken, and it was revealed on the Merv Griffin show. Imagine seeing this on a show, like Jimmy Kimmel whips this out. It's like, hey, we're gonna play Plinko. Check out this demon. Many believe this is the ghost of John DeFeo, one of the boys who lived there prior during the 1974 event. Now we're still trying to cover this one, but what do you guys think? Is this an elaborate hoax? Is this a young boy? Or is this one of the many demons that was said to haunt the house? Sound off down below. Number eight, the SS Watertown. This picture here perhaps is one of the creepiest on this list. I'm not sure what to think of this one. It comes from 1924 and it shows what appears to be two older men or two older figures almost. I don't know, it's water, it's hard to tell. Some believe it's James Courtney and Michael Meehan in the water. Now the two had previously died and were buried at sea, hence that's why their first thought was them as to who it was. Other crew members saw these strange faces in the water as well. So when they turned back to get another look, five out of the six photos showed nothing. This was the only photo that showed what they saw. Are these the two lost crewmen or is the vessel haunted by sinister forces? Number seven, backseat driver. This photo is from 1959. Okay, it was taken by a lady named Mabel Chinnery. And the photo at first glance is just a classic 60s shot of a man in a car. That man was Mabel's husband. Now the man in the back seat, however, that back left seat, we have no idea who that was. Her husband apparently was the only guy in the car at the time. And also, that's a pretty tough angle. If you wanted to recreate this photo with your friends after work, like try this. This is a really hard shot, even with phones now. It would be hard back in the day. It's like he's appearing to us through the seat almost with that angle. So either this is a lie, which happens often, people can lie, and a man was sitting in the back left seat, or like Mabel thinks, maybe this is her dead mother-in-law. 
Now, if she had said father-in-law, I think maybe it was his spirit, but this for sure looks like an older gentleman with a collar or something. Kind of looks like, uh, dare I say it, the devil. I don't know, I read a lot of comic books. Number six, Coventry Society Demon. You may be thinking, some of these may not be demons, Taylor. Maybe they're just nice spirits who stuck around after they passed. Yeah, while it's nice to believe that, photos like this convinced me otherwise. This is from the Coventry Freeman Society and it shows everybody at this event dressed to the nines. But when you look at the top left corner over here, you see a hooded figure. Somebody that clearly doesn't belong with the vibe in this room at this event. Nobody else was seen also at any point at that night wearing a hood like this. So of course many believe it was a dark part of the afterlife photobombing this event. Honestly, I totally believe that. This is a weird one. The hood, it's... I, maybe I've been watching Harry Potter lately. I don't know. Maybe it's a Dementor. We actually don't know. Number five the ghost pilot. Oh, this one gives me the creeps. I'm hoping it's just a friendly ghost. I included it, it's kind of nice, but you never really know, honestly. This one, I did some research, it's creepy. Any sort of spirit I don't welcome. Yeah, I don't gamble on the afterlife. I'm actually all set. The ghost pilot is a photograph that shows a spirit from 1987. A woman named Mrs. Sayer was visiting an airfield in England, so of course, she did the classic tourist thing and got a photo in the cockpit. We all do it at some point, but do you ever think of who may have died in that exact spot before? After the age of 10 years, old, I was like, you know what, I understand ghosts, I'm not gonna sit in that tank, I'm good, thanks. People swear the Titanic was a cursed ship and that spirits were responsible for the ship's bad luck. Now, next time you wanna sit in the pilot seat, look around for spirits, because this image was developed and it appears that somebody or something was in the helicopter with Miss Sayer the whole time. Number four, the Paris Demon. Originally, the tunnels under Paris were built for stone mines, but near the end of the 18th century, it turned into something haunting. Cemeteries were starting to fill up, and I mean that in a literal sense, and humans didn't figure out how to be clean, so bodies would just be laying on the sides of the roads. They started to pile up over time, so the solution was to use these catacombs. They were no longer needed for those mines anymore, so might as well use them as a mass graveyard. And now we have the scariest basement in the world. We have walls of skulls that on one hand, it's cool as hell, it's natural history, it's gothic, yet beautiful, but when Google Maps tried to give a user an up-close look, it seemed to have caught a shadowy demon figure. With more than six million souls laying down there, it doesn't shock me to hear about something like this at all. There's a video of the street view and in it you can see this figure. Check it out yourself. Number three, demons are us. For this next one, we'll be going down the Lego aisle. Yeah, how fun. A haunted Toys R Us. Can you imagine all those toys starting up at night by themselves? Boom. Bay Area's haunted Toys R Us is no longer a thing. Thankfully, as of 2018, that location closed down, but its tales, they live on forever. The Sunnyvale Toys R Us demonic presence appeared in the background of this photo. But of course, like others on this list, the people present at the time of the photo swear that nobody else was there. It's like everyone has bad memory, everyone has good memory, I can't really tell right now. It's like, mm, could this be a spirit or a demon caught on tape that just happens to be at a Toys R Us? I vote yes. Employees talked about creepy things happening there at night all the time, and the Sunnyvale store is indeed haunted by more than one ghost. That's what people say. The store stood where the Murphy farm once stood, so many think the spirit is the ghost of Johnny Johnson. I don't know, the fact that Ouija boards are a toy, a toy that is commonly used to, I don't know, communicate with spirits, maybe closing these doors was the best call. I don't think we welcomed in any good spirits. I don't think any spirits are clocking in for work, you know what I mean? Now it's closed, so I'm like, it didn't work. Whatever we tried, didn't work. Number two, ghost boots. These boots are made for haunting, and that's just what they'll do. Yeah, I put a pair of boots on this list. That's where we're at now. This photo of a young girl may look like a classic family trip, but upon closer inspection, it seems like somebody or something is standing behind her. Now, of course, her father said that nobody was behind her at the time that it was taken, and I agree, that, and like, honestly, and I believe him. Honestly, that would be pretty weird if he was like, hey, can you stand right here? Yeah, are you behind my daughter, don't move, but you stand right here in this open field, thanks. ka -ching. I don't believe it, I don't buy it, it's weird. This shot was taken at Zushi Zenigawa, Japan, and you can see boots and what looks like clothing sticking out from behind the child's elbow. The kid's father said, I took a few photos and when I was looking through them at night, I noticed the boots behind her. I took several photos in the same spot, but only one of them had boots. You always see that in movies, right? At night they're going through and they see like it's 2 a.m. It's never at a Walmart while it's being developed. They don't find these photos in a bright, busy area. It's always in like a dark kitchen. Ooh, it's creepy. So he freaked out and then put it on Reddit and then now we're here, full circle. And finally coming in at number one, 
cave drawings. I know these aren't photos, but come on, there's nothing more eerie than humanity's origin, right? Let's do it, let's go back, let's turn the clocks back. And for archeologists from around the world, this cave system in France doubles as the world's oldest art gallery. These Paleolithic paintings are haunting to look at. They were created from humans about 20,000 years ago, and it's now considered a heritage site. There's many of these caves around the world. So if you're thinking about sneaking down there in the Lascaux Caves and taking a look yourself, well, you better think again. The cave was opened originally in 1948, but due to carbon dioxide levels from visitors, it was closed in 1963. Learning about our history is challenging, and when it's slowly fading away, that surely doesn't help. Just gotta hold your breath while you read? This is crazy. I'm currently reading a book called Supernatural by Graham Hancock, and in it, he tries to dig through history to find the origins of spirituality, and markings in caves like these ones from ages ago definitely help. They resemble these demon-looking creatures almost, and this is long before religion. These drawings were supposedly from hallucinations, but many believe it's one of the first accounts of a demon interacting with a human. It's just drawn on a cave wall. Peck Merle is a cave in France that also has these strange drawings, and some say they resemble aliens, others, of course, voting demons. What do you guys think? This is from 25,000 years ago. Write all your thoughts and concerns down in the comments below. Kick off the list at number 10, Midnight Snack. This one was pretty recent. It was from December 2020. It was uploaded to the wonderful world of Reddit by a user named Oopsie Poopy Man, which is a great name. I would have taken that as well. The photo, at first, I mean, I didn't see anything. I had to turn my brightness up, so I suggest that you do the same. But in the meantime, I'll read you the caption for this photo. They say, after hearing taps and noises from my kitchen, I take a photo and I see this. That's pretty scary. Maybe it's the Jabberwockies and they're gonna do a flash mob in your kitchen. That's what it appears to be. Or maybe, as the several other thousand people have commented you should leave the house right away. That's terrifying. Also, the taps and stuff, being in Canada, I would assume that's raccoons, but that's much more scary than raccoons. Actually, it's pretty close. Five raccoons versus one demon. I'm like, mm, it's a lot of hands, a lot of grabbing. Is this a real ghost photo or is this a hoax? I zoomed in on the photo once and honestly, that was enough for me. You can go check it out yourself if you want. I'm done with this one. Number nine, photo bomb. We have to include the work of William Hope in a list of spirit photography. I mean, he was the paranormal pioneer. In 1920, he took a photo of a couple and in the background, this one's also a little tricky to see, but if you zoom in, you can see a really tall woman floating in between the two. Yeah, this one's really out there, so I'm not really sure I'm buying it, but also there's something to it that gives me the creeps still. It's like she's missing her head almost, like the silhouette doesn't have a head, but you can clearly see her face in the middle of the body, like near the chest. It's intriguing either way, but one way or another, it's not easy to tamper with photos. Today, you can easily fake this photo of a demon or a monster or whatever, but back in the 1920s, I don't know, could you do this? Get out of town. Cameras back then were like fire hazards. I'm not buying it. That's for sure a demon. Number eight, the brown lady of Random Hall. This one is a classic. If you haven't seen this photo, it's gonna live rent free in your head, that's for sure, from here on out. This tale kicked off back in 1936 after a photo went around Country Life magazine. The photo shows the spirit wearing a brown gown, hence where her name comes from. Not the most creative of nicknames. They're just like, that's what it looks like. That's what we'll call it. Okay, demonology. Just the thing you want to see when you come home. Just a ghost floating on your staircase after a long night. We love it. Legend has it the ghost is that of Dorothy Townshend. She was the sister of Robert Walpole, who was the first prime minister of Britain back in 1676. A little bit of history there. Some reports say that the image is a result of long exposure gone wrong, but either way, I don't like looking at this photo. Let's move on again. Number seven, the shining hotel spirit. It appears to be a spirit or a demon, ghost, aberration, something black haired and scary looking, I don't know, just floating through the hallways. Why do I get the scary videos, man? I can't go through this and zoom in. Like my heart, I can't take these. I can't, why are we doing this? If there's a part three, I'm quitting. The room was of course empty at the time the photo was taken and I believe that because there's no way you can just snap a random photo of just a random child. I don't know, you're gonna probably go to jail if you try that, don't do that. And then if you try and say, oh, I was looking for a ghost, that's, that's not a good excuse. You're gonna get kicked out for sure. You gotta go where no one else is. That's the whole point of getting a ghost photo. When confronted about the photo, Nosling ensured that he doesn't even know how to use his cell phone, let alone Photoshop. That I kind of believe. What do you guys think? This one's a little convincing, dare I say. Number six, floating hand. 
This one is so scary. Okay, another photo from over a hundred years ago. This time the photographer may or may not have caught a floating demon hand. Yeah, that's where we're at now. Part two, we love it. I'll show you the photo. You let me know if you see anything at first. Here we go. Okay, take a good look. Anything just sticking out, poking out, anything weird? This photo is a group of women who worked in a linen factory and the lady on the far right has an extra hand. This one's resting on her shoulder. This may be a hidden person. I mean, maybe somebody with long arms was out of frame. I'm a lanky dude, I get it. I can put my arms around like nine of my closest friends. Look at this, I'm out of frame for both these hands, that's nuts. But it's the positioning of the hand that gives me the chills. It looks curled almost, which gives me like a demonic, insidious, the last key vibes. I don't like it, let's move on. Number five, the specter of newbie church. This one comes from 1963, so it's a little more recent, but even so, this is one of the most convincing ones on this list. In my humble opinion, I haven't seen any ghosts or anything. Reverend KF Lord took this photo in newbie church in England, and Lord ensures us that this photo is 100% real. He didn't tamper it. Anyone named Lord doesn't lie about things. That's just, that's just facts. I mean, to be fair, it looks like the spirit is facing the camera. Like, it's a pretty good frame. It looks definitely fake. The whole Plague Doctor vibe is going on though that's what makes me feel sick in this whole situation anything with plague doctors has always given me the ooh, the creeps i don't like it i worked at an amusement park and their halloween hot month thing and i was assigned as a plague doctor and i couldn't even look in the mirror also for sure i wouldn't have just faced a photo of someone's taken i would have done like a creepy move this is too normal i don't know but the fact that it's normal makes it kind of believable the figure seems to be standing on the first step to the altar yet somehow is still taller than the altar itself we think by this photo it's about nine feet tall Whoever faked this, if that is the case, must have been on stilts. Also, stilts and a sheet over your face on a staircase, that's just impressive either way, honestly. Number four, the background demon. Another piece of work from William Hope. This one, even creepier than the last. The face of this demonic woman appears to be floating above the lady on the right of this photo. Again, these are from the 1920s, and the only hint as to who or what was in these photographs was written on the back. Yeah, something's written on the back of this photo. That's how you know it's real. The message reads, why is the child always pushing to the front, which is a very creepy question, and the message below it also reads, do we get messages from the higher spirits? Okay, two creepy questions written on the back of a creepy 1920s photo. Is this what you wanted? Cause I didn't want to see this, but now I had to and it's going to be here and now you'll be fine. You're going to keep scrolling through YouTube. I'm going to go to bed over there and be afraid. Hit that thumbs up. I don't know. Maybe I'll be able to sleep. It'll definitely help. Number three nursing home spirit. Okay, we're the final three, so it's time to get real. This photo was taken from a nursing home resident the same night another resident had passed away. This was back in 2015, and that night they heard a door open and close, but at this hour, there were no visitors there at the time. For sure, no one was there. There were logins, all that jazz. No one could just waltz in, or walk in for that matter. So there's also a great amount of people who think that this image here is one of two things. The spirit of the resident that passed away, or the Grim Reaper. Yeah, the door opening and closing, people think that was the Grim Reaper coming in. How scary is that? A few comments were saying how it's comforting to know that in the end you aren't alone. Yeah, you know, I'm not gonna lie, I'd rather die alone than have this dude break into my home at 4 a.m. and then just walk me to the living room where I'm gonna die. I don't know. I'm all set. Number two, window spirit. Personal trainer Tony Ferguson was filming a castle in England, as most personal trainers do, but when the 33-year-old looked back on that footage, he thought that he'd missed out on a prank. He couldn't believe what he was looking at. Check it out. This was at Hearst Castle in Hampshire. He also recalls that nobody could have been moving around in that space. It was very petite. This wasn't the first time the spirit also had made its presence known, though. The time before, Tony Ferguson said that it was this white mist, but this time it actually had energy to form. Yeah, whenever something has energy to form, that's how you know you're messing with some real I was asking it to show itself and this white mist flew straight at my camera. I mean, this time around, he got footage of the actual thing moving around. So whatever it's happening, it's getting more friendly or it's getting more comfortable. Either way, I'm never going to this castle and neither should you. What are your thoughts? Is this convincing or is this fake? And last but not least, number one, the house guest. Okay, I saved the best for last. And by that, I mean, this is the scariest video I've ever seen. Let's do it. This comes from a middle-aged man in Oxford, North Carolina. It was his only day off work. He was looking forward to just kicking back and relaxing, but instead, the lights started to flicker in his house and immediately after, the smoke detector started going off. The fridge, the bathroom, all these lights were going off, you name it. The water even started to run by itself. He filmed the footage, you know, while he was fleeing his home on his only day off. And while he was looking back on the footage later on, he saw this. Pretty terrifying, right? 
I, I know, I had to look at it and now it's gonna be stuck in your head. Starting us off with number 10 is the elevator ghost. Now when I first saw this video, nothing was really happening for the longest time. So I genuinely thought it was just gonna be a waste of my time, but then it was like a mic drop happened. To preface this, the owner of the footage is adamant that the footage is 100% authentic and real. So let's just take that and discuss. Now the CCTV footage was from February of 2008 and you can see two workers talking while waiting for the elevator. They eventually get into the elevator and talk some more, you know, can't believe we're working overtime again, doesn't the boss suck, I didn't even get a Christmas bonus this year, etc, etc, you know how it is. And mind you, while they're talking, both guys are leaning against the little railing in the elevator. They reach their floor and they both leave, but as the one on the left lets go of the railing to leave, you see this white ghost zombie figure that is left behind, almost like the man was standing in the ghost, or vice versa. The men leave not even realizing what was in the elevator with them the whole time and this ghost has its skull hanging down really low and is walking very, very slowly out of the elevator as well. Now I don't even know how this could have been a hoax because the ghost is literally there as soon as the man moves. Like it wasn't edited, there was no compartment it could have been hiding in. I just don't see any fakeness in it, I just see horror. Let me know what you guys think. Fake or not? Coming in at number 9 is the brown lady, and this photograph might be the most well-known ghost photo ever taken, ever. Now the infamous picture was captured back in 1936 by photographers who were documenting 17th century Raynham Hall in Norfolk, England for a magazine. It said the photographer Captain Hubert had his head under the focusing cloth so he wasn't really paying attention but his assistant Indre Shearer exclaimed that she saw a veiled form gliding down the stairs and told him to quickly take a picture. Now he took the picture but when he got out from under the focusing cloth to see for himself, the life form was nowhere to be found which made him think Indre had made up the whole thing. But when the photo got developed, it was so very clearly in the middle of the staircase that it's actually astonishing. A full white pale shadow of an apparition that people think is Lady Dorothy Townshend. Dorothy died in the early 1800s from chicken pox but other stories circulated saying her husband locked her in a bedroom forever because she committed adultery. That is a saucy story for a saucy ghost. At number 8 we have CCTV footage. So back in 2014 in New Mexico, surveillance footage at a police station revealed what appeared to be a ghost gliding along from the right side of the room to the left. Now according to officers, that area was completely secured, the gates were locked, none of the alarms went off or were tripped, so a real human being definitely did not make their way inside. Honestly, I don't know why we're giving this ghost a hard time and calling it out on the news, like maybe it was just a law abiding ghost and it was just patrolling the station to keep it safe. Maybe it was a police officer when it was alive so it was just having a nostalgic night. We don't know its story. Who are we to judge? Carry on young ghost. On your way. Do what you were doing. Carry on. Shoo. Filling at number 7 slot is the Baby Crib Menace. Back in March of this year, a couple based in Michigan captured a blurry pale spirit form of some kind moving past their daughter Lily's crib. The footage caught on the baby monitor literally shows a white pale figure gliding past and the couple even claimed that Lily sustained unexplainable scratches on her body after the incident which they obviously blamed on the ghost. I like, nah B, if a ghost is terrorizing my kid, you better would go ghost hunter on its ass and literally find a way to ban Banish it into the ether, back into the afterlife, back to whatever hell it escaped from. Not on my watch, Casper. You ain't getting my kid. No, no. Now at number six is Lord Cumbermere. Amateur photographer Sybil Corbett set up a camera at the Cumbermere Abbey Library located in Cheshire, England. She took an hour-long exposure while the funeral of her brother-in-law Lord Cumbermere was happening four miles away. Now the Lord had died in a riding accident and was being buried simultaneously. But somehow when the photos were developed and 
apparition can be clearly seen sitting on the seat in the photo, and people speculated that it was Lord Cumbermere since the chair was actually his when he was alive. On the other side, skeptics say a servant entered the room and sat in the seat while the exposure took place, and that's what the apparition was. But most, if not all, the staff was at the funeral itself anyway, and the apparition is wearing a collared shirt, which I don't think a servant would wear or could afford at the time. So I mean, I think the skeptics are very much wrong. Sorry. Haters gon' hate. Haters be sipping on that haterade. <laughs> Coming in at number 5 is the ghostly pepper. I know this list is meant to be horrifying and scary, but I mean I found a ghost dog captured on film and it's honestly really cute so I couldn't not include it. And I know there's enough dog lovers out watching this right now that I'd be forgiven so I'm not even sorry. So anyway, the story of these dogs was written in the 1939 print of Life magazine and it goes like this. The owner of this dog actually had two dogs, a cute little white terrier and a large other breed of dog and both puppas were best friends. What a cute story. The sadly, the terrier died and the big dog was absolutely heartbroken and I mean that's very understandable. No one's trying to lose their best friend. Now a psychic photographer snapped a photo of the owner and the big dog and you can very clearly see the spirit of the little dog hovering on the back side of the bigger one. It's like its head is just resting on the big dog's tailbone and I thought this was so cute. Like the little one just misses the big one too. They both just miss each other. It's a very cute heartwarming story. And we need that for Number five, a nice palette cleanser, you guys. At number four is Madonna. Not like a virgin Madonna, she's very much still alive, let's not get it twisted. This is Madonna of Bachelors Grove. Now, this photo was taken by the Ghost Research Society of America when they visited the abandoned Bachelors Grove Cemetery back in 1991. Mary Huff was taking black and white infrared photographs on the site, and despite crazy readings being observed on her equipment, no one saw anything out of the ordinary. But when the film got developed, one photograph revealed a woman sitting on a tombstone on her own. She was wearing out of date clothing and was staring into the distance so we don't really know what was going on with her. Was it her tombstone she was sitting on while contemplating why she was dead? Was she sitting on her mother's tombstone, her father's, her lover's? We have no idea. But she was very clearly captured, very clearly there. What's your story? Madonna. Filling under the three sod are the faces in the water. Now this one requires some backstory, so let's take it back. Back in December of 1924, James Courtney and Michael Meehan, two crewmen of the SS Watertown, had a freak accident on their vessel. The men were cleaning the cargo tank of the oil tanker, but were suffocated by gas fumes and died quite quickly. They were buried at sea near the Mexican coast, but the next day, one of the crew members reported seeing James and Michael's faces in the waves. The man saw their faces for a solid 10 seconds before they faded away and it kept happening over the course of the next few days. When the vessel arrived in New Orleans, the paranormal events were relayed to the crew's employers and they suggested trying to photograph the occurrence. Employers just don't care, they're like, oh photograph that, I can sell it for millions. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> so Captain Tracy bought a camera for the rest of the trip and when the faces did appear again, they captured this image. And ironically, after the crew of the ship changed, the sightings were no longer reported either. So I mean, maybe these two were just playing a really sick joke on their former crewmen. They're like, ha ha ha, we may be dead, but at least we're having a good time. Now in number two is the little boy. And this picture was captured so clearly that I'm still like, is this Photoshop? Is this actually real? You guys tell me. So back in 2008, Neil Neil Sandback, a photographer, was on a farm in Hertfordshire taking pictures for a couple who wanted to have their wedding at the location. When Neil was going through his digitals later on, he saw one picture that had what appeared to be a glowing ghost figure of a little boy peeking out from the corner of the building. And can you see he's so clearly there? I can even make out his facial features, which creeped me out even more, because his face looks more like a skull than it does a face. The couple later asked the farm staff if they had ever seen anything paranormal or weird at the farm, and a lot of them shared that they had seen a young boy in white night clothes. So I mean, <laughs> say no more. I hope you didn't have your wedding there. That's just not a good omen to start your married life on. You know what I mean? Ghosts of little boys? No. I'm trying for happily ever after, not happily never after. You know what I mean? And finally, at number one is the man. This footage was captured on a car's dash cam in Thailand's Suratani province back in 2018. It was about 2.30 in the morning and this car is just going down the highway when a man in blue shorts and a white shirt literally materializes out of nowhere.
The car goes right through the man, and when the man turned around to check, the ghost was nowhere to be found. I just don't get how he appeared from literally nothing. He just came out of the ether. Most people who've seen the footage think it was a ghost, whereas skeptics think it was a shadow being reflected in front of the car somehow, which I mean, make that make sense to me. I don't understand how that works. Reflection of what? The rear view mirrors are pointed behind you. What is reflecting in front of me? Please tell me. Exactly, that's what I thought. And I'm not even a car mechanic. Number 10, SS Watertown. In December 1924, James Courtney and Michael Meehan were crew members on the SS Watertown. They were cleaning a cargo tank of the oil tanker and they were overcome by gas fumes, which resulted in both of their deaths. Due to this, the crew buried them at sea, but to their astonishment, the ghostly faces of the soldiers appeared in the water the next day. Yeah, like in the waves. Later on, many other crew members reported seeing the faces as well. The faces were so visible that the captain of the ship ordered them to take a picture of them to have for proof, you know, so people didn't think that they were crazy. And this was smart because if someone told me they saw faces of two dead men in the water, I would probably never talk to them again and think that they were cuckoo. Although, in the picture, you can clearly see two faces, which is just plain creepy. When the SS Watertown return to land, the negative was even checked for fakery and proclaimed genuine. So yeah, just two faces chilling in the waves. No big deal. Number nine, the nurse. This photo was taken in an abandoned tuberculosis hospital in Louisville, Kentucky called Waverly Hills Sanatorium in 2006. As you can imagine, many people passed away here and it's rumored to be filled with paranormal activity. In recent years, it has become one of America's most popular destinations for ghost hunters. This image depicts a woman just standing to the right side, but when the photo was taken, no one was there. It was a ghost. It's been agreed among the paranormal community that the photo depicts Mary Lee, a nurse who took her own life in the hospital. The story goes this poor woman was impregnated by a doctor who worked in the hospital but later wanted nothing to do with her. Nowadays she wanders the halls of the hospital and interacts with ghost hunters. Number 8. Tulip Staircase Reverend Ralph Hardy, a retired clergyman from White Rock, British Columbia, took this famous photograph in 1966. Originally he only wanted to take a picture of the elegant Tulip Staircase in the Queen's House section of the National Maritime Museum in Greenwich, England. And I mean, I don't blame him, they're pretty. But upon development, the photo revealed a shrouded figure climbing the stairs. It's strange and unsettling, and Ralph said there was no one else in the frame when he took it. Experts who examined the original negative concluded that it had not been tampered with. The vicinity of this staircase is rumored to be haunted, and unexplained footsteps have often been heard there, so it's most likely something supernatural who just wanted their photo taken. Number 7. The Brown Lady The Brown Lady of Raynham Hall is a ghost that reportedly haunts Raynham Hall in Norfolk, England. It became one of the most famous hauntings in the United Kingdom when photographers from Country Life magazine claimed to have captured its image. According to the legend, the Brown Lady is the ghost of Dorothy Walpole, the sister of Robert Walpole, generally regarded as the first Prime Minister of Great Britain. She was the second wife of Charles Townshend, second Viscount Townshend, who was notorious for his violent temper. The story goes that when Charles discovered that his wife had committed adultery with Lord Wharton, he punished her by locking her in her rooms in the family home, Random Hall. According to Mary Wortley Montagu, Dorothy was in fact entrapped by the Countess of Wharton. She invited Dorothy over to stay for a few days, knowing that her husband would never allow her to leave, not even to see her children. She remained at the Random Hall until her death in 1726 from smallpox. This is just an extremely sad story, and I can't imagine her pain. The first sighting of the brown Lady was in 1835 and the photograph was taken in 1936. Number six falling through the ceiling. Back in the 1950s, the Cooper family from Texas moved into their new house. Once there, they took a family photo, which seems normal, right? Well, not for them. When the picture was developed, the image of a body falling from the ceiling was clearly visible. To be clear, no one fell from the ceiling when they took the photo, so what happened? As further investigation on the story has brought no plausible explanation, there exist many speculations, including one that argues that the shadow is the ghost of the previous owner of the house, but my question is why is he falling from the ceiling and why did he have to ruin that beautiful family photo? I remember seeing this photo on the internet when I was probably too young to see it, and after all these years, this image still gives me chills. Ugh. Number 
five, backseat ghost. On March 22nd, 1959, Mabel Chinnery and her husband drove to the graveyard in which her mother had been buried. Her mother had died a week previously and they were going to take photos of her grave, and they did. As Mabel returned to the car, she decided to use her last remaining shot to take a candid picture of her husband waiting in the vehicle on the passenger side. Nothing was out of the ordinary, it was just a random photo, but when the pictures were developed, one of Mabel's friends pointed out that someone, believed to be her mother, appeared to be behind her husband in the back seat of the car. Now, was the figure her mother or some other spirit? Who knows? I mean, they were in a graveyard, it could have been anyone or anything. The photograph itself wasn't seen in the United States until the story got a whole page in the Sunday newspaper. Mabel stated that the spot where the unexpected figure appeared in the back of the car is where her mother always sat when they went for drives, so it makes sense that it could be her. An unnamed photo expert is quoted as saying, the lady in the back can't be the result of a double exposure. If it were, the doors upright wouldn't block off part of her face, and she can't be a reflection in the window either. So maybe it really is Mabel's mother. Number four, Wem Ghost. On November 19, 1995, Wem Town Hall burned to the ground in Wem Shropshire, located in England. During the fire, Tony O'Rahilly, a sewage farm worker who was also an amateur photographer, was originally stopped by police from approaching the burning building. He took a picture of the blaze from across the street with a 200mm lens. It appeared to depict the image of a young girl in the doorway of the burning building. Now, to be clear, there were no injuries or fatalities from the fire. This was not a human. Locals who saw the photo believed it was the ghost of Jane Cherm, a young girl who was accused in 1677 of starting a fire in the same town. The image of the girl in the doorway of the burning building was not noticed by Tony, the photographer, or the onlookers. It only appeared after the photo had been developed. I mean, if she was accused of starting a fire and then she popped back up in an area where another fire started, it seems like it really could be Jane. Number three, the specter of Newby Church. The specter of Newby Church is the name given to a figure in the the photograph taken in the Church of Christ the Consoler on the grounds of Newby Hall in North Yorkshire, United Kingdom. The image was taken in 1963 by the Reverend Kenneth F. Lord. As the figure appears to resemble a human, much speculation has been had regarding what type of person might be in the image. Most speculation by believers has concluded that it resembles a 16th century monk with a white shroud over his face, possibly to mask leprosy or another disfigurement. Others believe it looks like a plague doctor from the 16th and 17th centuries. Initial claims suggest that the figure would measure at 9 feet tall, but its feet are not visible, so it could easily be standing on a box, giving the impression of height. Some people thought the photo was due to double exposure, but photographic experts have concluded that the image is not the result of double exposure. So what was it, and why was it in a church? No one truly knows, but it's extremely frightening. What does it look like to you? Let me know in the comments. Number 2. Mystery Guest on January 22, 1985, the Conventry Freeman organization and their guests stood in prayer during a dinner event. All the guests are still, and as it was a dark room, the photographer probably thought it would be the perfect time to allow for a longer than usual exposure to get enough light into the picture make sense. Now, nothing was out of the ordinary at the time, but as people started to see the print of the picture, a mystery surfaced. Who was the robed figure standing near the end of one of the tables? No one had dressed up for the event, and no one remembers anyone standing there as they stood for prayer. The figure also seems to be taking part in the prayer, head slightly bowed, hands clasped in front. St. Mary's Commentary, Warwickshire, is where the event was hosted. It has many legends of ghosts and paranormal activity, but I wonder why this being decided to join in prayer. It just gives me bad vibes like evil lurks within it. And coming in at number one is The Young Boy. One of the most famous haunted houses in the United States is the Dutch Colonial House at 112 Ocean Avenue in Amityville, New York. The haunting stems from the night of November 13th, 1974, when 23 year old Ronald Defoe ended the lives of all six members of his family. He was then arrested, convicted, and given six concurrent life sentences. In December, of 1975, George and Kathy Lutz, along with their three children, moved into the house and claimed that spooky things were happening. For example, George would wake up at 3.15 every morning, which was the approximate time that Ronald committed his crimes. Kathy said she would feel a ghostly presence and be embraced by it. All of this and more caused the family to flee in fear after only staying in the house for 28 days, and honestly, 
I don't blame them. Due to this, demonologist Ed and Lorraine Warren visited the house and set up time lapse infrared cameras and caught this photo. The picture wasn't made public until three years later when George Lutz appeared on The Merv Griffith Show in 1979. Believers of the haunting think that the picture is the ghost of the youngest Defoe son, John Matthew, who was nine at the time. Others believed it's a staged photo, but despite its controversy, this picture is one of the most frightening images from the Amityville horror. Mm -hmm. 